Well, I'm recording whenever you're ready. Oh, okay. <laughs> Hi guys, here we are with the nine times Le Mans winner, Tom Christensen. So tonight is the team presentation of WRT and the 10 year anniversary. So I have some questions for you, Tom. I have questions for you as well. Oh, yeah, okay. How did you get interested in motorsport? When was the first time that your passion got into it? <laughs> Hello, over here, please. <laughs> uh, so, my brother, is a racing driver. Yeah. He's racing this year in Formula 3. Car. So, he will be racing in Monaco, Abu Dhabi, Spa, for hours, for hours. Yeah. And so, yeah, my dad is a journalist, a sport journalist. So, I live this world since I was a baby. Yeah. So, yeah. That's why I love to support them. And so yeah, now I'm working for WRT in six races as a blogger and I make mm -hmm. So I also have to look sometimes in the camera or I don't I can look at you? <laughs> Too, okay. for all the WRT yeah. fans. <laughs> I am a fan myself. I, I love the team. It's a team which of course is created with a, with a lot of passion. I know Winston when he was a driver, obviously many years ago. And obviously seeing some of the, the people who are, he, he have created this team around uh, has been very nice to follow. It's a lot of passion. It's always nice to come in the paddock or, or even here at the the Holy Grail, the temple, at the premises of WRT. It's, um, it's been a very nice day here. You raced with uh, WRT in 2012 with Yeah, we were racing one. We were actually, it was a joint of Audi with uh, WRT and Phoenix and Audi Sport at the Spa 24 hours. It was a wonderful experience. But uh, it goes back. I know Vincent from when I was living in Monaco. And uh, we were having uh, a lot of, uh, spending quite a lot of time together uh, when, we were, when we were drivers. And the year after you were at Le Mans, your last race in 2013, your last uh, victory. Yeah. yeah. I was there, it was my first time at Le Mans, so I remember it. Yeah. But yeah, now you are an Audi ambassador. So what do you expect uh, from Audi as a some private team uh, for the debut in DTM? Oh, well, I mean, from, from this team, I expect uh, it's a great challenge. And I expect that it will be, uh, be good, they will be competitive, but the DTM is incredibly hard. And uh, in that sense, to, to winning, be winning races, uh, is something you cannot expect in the in the in the first year, but when you look at the history of WRT, when they actually they win the first race, they compete, they are on the podium in the first race, they compete in the GT. You can never say never, and that is what I, I like about it. They take a challenge and they are, are very determined, uh, trying to create a platform and go. It's the next step for WRT, and it's a, exactly the right timing. As you know, the DTM Championship this year has um, new regulation, has uh, new engines, has new cars, has new aerodynamics, mm -hmm. and uh, obviously quite dynamic, dynamic around it, as well as looking for the future, maybe joining with something with the Japanese, the Super GT. So there's, I would say it's really the, the right time in terms of opportunities, in terms of entering, and that's why I'm very happy to see WRT still with the progress with Audi, working with Audi in this close relationship, uh, that they take on the, the journey with, the, with all the very, very strong top teams in this uh, premium series as DTM is. Competition is incredibly tough, now. very close, very hard. As you say, it's a big championship with high budgets. And can you compare it to the Formula One? Yeah, I, you would say, I mean, compare it. The easiest to say DTM is the uh, Formula One for, for saloon cars. Uh, it is the high level championship. It's, uh, the cars are complex, the cars are sophisticated. And in a way, obviously, it's an Audi A5. But underneath the skin, it's, it's a full-blooded race car. It's a silhouette of an Audi A5, but uh, 
there's a lot of engineering and a lot of detail going into that and that's what the, the WRT team has to look at all these details and try to uh, try to gather a very good experience this year, try to gather a very good platform this year so they will say hey that team is good, that team is progressing and hopefully then they will have a future and I'm, I'm sure if they have that they are going to win races at one day but how soon? You, you maybe know better than me. Uh, and talking about uh, races, let's talk about the 24 hours of Spa again. Most of us say every year Spa is more difficult to win than the 24 hours of Le Mans. Do you agree? Oh, uh, in, in some aspect, uh, maybe I only did it once, but uh, he should know he has won it. He has, he's very local in that sense. And obviously in the GT, you, um, you have a lot of uh, very competitive cars running at the, at the highest level. And, that's it. and there's always that bit that how many times it's going to rain. It's going to rain, but how many times will it rain? How do you do in terms of strategy? How do you do in terms of the incredibly tightness of, of the cars on the track. I would say they are both very, very tough. Le Mans with the speed differential of the different classes, that's a, that's a big danger aspect as well. The speeds are Le Mans are, 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 are very, very high. So yes, and somehow I can agree on, on some other aspect not. But what I want to say is that they are both incredibly tough and incredibly difficult to win and you cannot win them unless you have the attention to the smallest detail from the whole team, from the mechanics, from the engineers, from the preparation, and then taking that responsibility into the race. When there's suddenly a challenge coming up, you cannot ask and sit down and have a briefing about what we do. No, people have to take the decisions right away, and all the time it has to be right. And if it's not right, you back up the guy who made a mistake, because you need him soon again. And that's what's the effort which um, I think, or what I feel, or what I see, in, in the racing, or particularly at Audi, has been very good, and uh, and at WRT, it's uh, sometimes exceptional. WRT has a lot of new drivers, young drivers oh, yes. this year. Um, Charles Reyes has stopped uh, single seater to go on to GT. You raced to win single seater, and uh, you had the potential to go to Formula One, but you choose prototype. Um, is it the choice as good as for Um I don't know, but I mean, it's important to have a very open mind. I mean, I'm not saying sometimes it's not really the drivers choosing. Uh, sometimes it's the teams giving opportunities. And if you have a, a big heart for racing, it's very, very important that you join and the opportunities you have. And at the whole time, you gain a lot of experience. So I would say just follow absolutely. Follow, uh, follow the opportunities. And it has been very nice to see all the excitement, see the eyes of the young drivers uh, coming up. Um, some are smiling, some are nervous, some are, they, they, they're very, very committed to do uh, a good season because they know if they do well, they can progress. And uh, that's really uh, what is nice about racing. It's the, the passion and the opportunities you see in, 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 in basically it's, 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 it's about people and it's about uh, some high potential from some good drivers which are gathered because they would like to be part of this team, they would like to drive on this team. So they put, uh, they put a lot of pressure on themselves, it's positive, uh, but uh, and that, that's, uh, that's very good. Yeah. And tonight we discovered uh, WRT's program. What's yours? As an Audi ambassador? That was my program. I was uh, invited to help John Heindhoff, you know, Radio Le Mans. Yeah. He has uh, the voice of, of, for me, of motorsport. And uh, for him and me to, to go through the, the, the evening, that was very good. That's my program. Now I can go back and rest, and then we will see. Uh, apart from that, I'm with Audi at, at, at many many events, uh, most of them away from the racetracks. I enjoy that very much. The heritage of Audi Sport, I've been part of this uh, this manufacture, this team for many, many years. I am the head of the FIA, the Drivers' Commission. Um, I'm, uh, I'm having the, the job as president at, at present. 
uh, which I enjoy. Sometimes I'm a steward at Formula One, Rada Stewart. Um, I'm working with Rolex, um, so that's perfect timing for me as well. Uh, so in that sense, uh, doing commentating for Formula One in Scandinavia and Denmark, and um, and for Eurosport at the 24 Hours of Le Mans. So I'm also busy, but I'm not uh, I'm not yet a, a proper racing blogger like you. So I leave a bit up to you. Uh, in that sense, and I, I, I really am happy for what you do for uh, for the sport, and um, I would like to say thank you for the interview. Yes, just one last question. As uh, you have done in your career in Le Mans, so can you say something in French first? Because oui, oui, c'est ça. I can, but I mean, I don't, I don't speak a lot of good French. But I would say my career has not really been building around the money. It just happened that I also drive the money. Yeah. My career has been in Formula 3, yeah, yeah, yeah. touring cars, in DTM, in Japan. It's everywhere. Been to a long, but it's lots true. Of time. Yeah. So, but, uh, I can say, I would say, I would start with. Um, <laughs> Carte Rouge, Ira, Ira, uh, Maison Blanc, uh, Mulsanne, Hunadier. Uh, La Raidion, euh, Le Rouge. Le Rouge euh, Un grand merci. Thank you so much, Tom. Merci. 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 Au revoir.